Thanks for joining us, everyone. I'm just going to wait and see if there's a few more people that are going to join before I start. So if you do want to follow along, uh, you can grab yourselves any kind of paper, uh, just plain printing paper is totally fine. Um, you can grab some different pens, so I've just got a normal biro here. I've also got a fine liner, whiteboard marker. and some Sharpies. So a lot of this sort of stuff, I guess you just have at home anyway, um, especially just paper and biros, that's totally fine, just use that. Um, so. so this is something that I'd found on Pinterest. Um, and it's basically something that I've just kind of started playing around with um, just for sort of like a mindful activity more than anything. So it's very similar to using colouring books, um, even like a sort of paint by numbers thing you could totally do with some of these if you wanted to start sort of filling them in with crayons or with felt tips or anything. It's almost like making your own colouring books. So. At first I was a little intimidated because it looks, some of them look quite complicated, so some of the ones that I've done previously, it's almost like a sort of optical illusion. And they are quite time consuming some of them, but some people have quite a lot of time handy now. I know I've definitely got extra time to sit and do stuff like this. And it is quite satisfying once you've done it. So I'm just going to start with my thicker marker and I'm just using plain printing paper, just an A5 sheet. And I'll just quickly show you how I've done something like this. So this probably took about half an hour or so. So all I did was like, you just start with the border doesn't have to be particularly neat or artistic. It's just really about that sort of mindful exercise in swap pens. So once you've got your border, you just want to start adding in some random triangles around the edge. These can be different sizes, different shapes. They don't all have to be perfect triangles. And a lot of these things are kind of around sort of random placements and really just sort of trial and error until you find something that you feel is quite sort of aesthetically pleasing to you. So just kind of trust your instincts and just go with it. Don't worry too much about what it looks like at this point. Just keep adding these random triangles. It's all about layering and creating that sort of illusion. I 
think the key is as well not to make it too neat, too perfect, just to keep it as random as possible. Just keep building and building until you feel like you're, you've got a nice sort of border. And then once you feel like you've sort of got good kind of border in place, you can just start filling them in. So what I've been doing with this particular design is straight lines. So these can go any way you want them to go. I try and sort of alternate between triangles. So some will go diagonally, some will go straight, some will go horizontal. And the more you sort of play with it and build it up, the more you get that sort of effect. Almost like an optical illusion and things start to sort of blur into one and you get this really lovely effect. And again, if you're doing it and you think this doesn't look right, this isn't the effect that I want, sometimes if you just keep going and stick with it, you get that effect the more you add to it. Um, if it doesn't go right the first time, don't worry, just keep going. doing this a little quicker than I usually would be. You can sit for hours and do this and make it as neat as you want. It's quite a nice mindful exercise because you can just let your mind go blank. All you're doing is just thinking about where the next lines go in. If you want to spend a bit of time really concentrating on making it as neat as possible. Put a bit of mental energy into it and you do find it is very satisfying once you've completed it. And it can be quite addictive as well, actually. It's also one of those things that's quite satisfying to watch too. Similar to the acrylic pour that I did last week, which if you missed that is now up on our website to view. So if you head to the Inkwell website and just click on the, the arts tab, on the home page you can access the acrylic pour video and we've also got all of our meditation and arts and crafts videos on there too so do give me a comment let me know if you're trying this along at home I'm doing this very quick today just to show you how you do it. So you essentially just keep filling it in and you should get something that looks sort of like this. 
And then you can also kind of make different shapes with it as well. So I've made a heart on this one. And this was inspired by something I'd seen with mountains as well. So that's more of an actual picture. But you can definitely just kind of make random, random marks and just fill them in. This one I've done with a marker around the edges and then I've actually just used biro to fill it in. So you can get some nice effects with different, different pens. Yep, you definitely can use the finer pens. And this one that I've got is extremely fine, but you can really get some nice different effects with the finer and the thicker ones. So this was the first one that I did. Almost looks like sort of tree, tree stumps. Just to briefly show you how I've done that one, this is another one that I started, which is basically the border again. And then instead of drawing triangles, we're just drawing random lines, breaking it up into different shapes. You can do it as big or as little as you want to. And then there was a few different ways that I was doing this one. So for the smaller sections, I was just doing lines across. Now to get those sort of, that tree ring effect, instead of just doing straight lines, you can do slightly sort of curved lines. And once you start getting a bit of a curve going like this, you kind of get that slightly optical illusion effect of a wave almost. If you just keep that going all the way along that section, you get quite a nice effect happening. And it does require some patience, but I think at the minute, it's just really, really important for us to keep thinking about other stuff. Um, keeping your brain occupied, being creative as well. I mean, this is something that you don't necessarily have to be super artistic to get involved with. Anyone can do this. Kids can do this. Older people can do this. There's really no limit to who can get involved with this exercise. And once you sort of start going with it, you can, you know, it's endless possibilities of what you can do with it. So with the bigger sections, with this one, uh, the music playing in the background today is just some relaxing music, which I'm listening to on YouTube. I'll link it. So for the bigger sections, there's two ways of doing this. You can either start in the middle and work out, or you can start at the edges and work in. So obviously if you start at the edge and work in, you get the full circle kind of formation working inwards. Whereas if you start in the middle, like I did with this one, it sort of starts to cut off. So you've got the rings in the center and then the lines sort of start to cut off as you get to the outside. So the more different effects that you can use um, when they're sort of, when they all come together, it does look really interesting. 
If there's anything else you want to add to this one, feel free. Just keep building it up. And if you really wanted to take your time with something like this, you could use the thinner pen on a piece of paper this size. And then when you get to the center, just have a slightly thicker central circle that you sort of fill in. And then around the edge, do the same, just make a slightly thicker edge. And you just wanna sort of Curve the corners a little bit. So that's something you can just continue with. And then the next one I wanted to show you, just briefly, was some abstract painting that I've been doing, which looked like this originally. So this is just something that I did with a piece of card. And all you do is just put two or three different colors blobs of acrylic paint, poster paint across your piece of card and all you're doing is just dragging it down the paper two or three times and you get this really lovely effect. And there's another one here that I've done. And you can draw straight on top of this if you've got, got one of these white Posca pens which is really great for drawing over darker colours. So this one I've just done the same sort of triangular effect of the frame but it just gives it a whole new life when you put it over something like this and I just found that really interesting. There's lots of different things you can do with it. So I've got this one today, I'm just going to work on this one a little bit with the white pen. And I think a lot of this is just trusting yourself not worrying too much about necessarily what it's gonna look like, just allowing yourself to be a bit brave. Just draw anything you wanna draw. And it's really about just getting that creativity out and letting your mind wander. thinking about where you can put the next line, what you want to do next.
let me know if there's any other art activities that you do at home, any kind of drawing, colouring or anything that you like to do to relax. Perhaps this is the first thing you've done for a while. Do you find art relaxing or does it stress you out? So these Posca pens are basically what we use at Inkwell um, on blackboards, chalkboards, um, for the menu boards and everything. Um, they're really, really great, really hard wearing. Um, they're not the cheapest. I think they're about three or four pound each, um, but this is a slightly thicker nib. Um, I think you can probably, they're maybe cheaper, depending on how thick the nib is. Um, but yeah, they're really great and they last for a really long time. You can get lots of different colours as well. If you fancy investing in something a bit different, because you can get so many amazing effects out of this pen. And it's something that I hadn't really thought to use within artwork. I've kind of been using it for practical things, like I say, like the menu boards and stuff. But it's uh, it's giving quite a nice effect. It's strong enough to look really quite opaque over the black paint as well. So Posca, that's it, P-O-S-C-A. buy these pens in bulk as well I think I bought sort of two three at a time three four at a time they're slightly cheaper as well something slightly different with this one. Just going to start filling it in rather than just using it as a border. And if you are drawing along at home, please do send in your pictures that you've done. You can just comment on this post with any pictures of them. It'd be great to see what you've been doing.
don't worry if they're not finished or you can send them in when they are finished if you want to take a bit more time over them it's really about just building and adding first few times I did it I was a little bit worried about what should go where, what was going to look good. I think you just kind of have to relax into it and just trust your instincts. I'm just going to start adding some rings to this one as well. So all I'm doing here is just drawing a triangle like I did on the, the other tree ring one. You're just kind of working in from the outside, just following it around. And if you make a wonky line, just go with it, keep drawing around it. And that's where you get these really lovely effects from. They don't have to be perfectly straight lines. In fact, sometimes when you're doing the ring effects, it actually looks better when they're not perfectly round, perfectly straight. So this one, I'm just going to do an example working from the inside. So you just make your slightly thicker central part and then just follow it around. And just try and stick to that line that you've done before. all of it around. And then you kind of get to the point where it's going to cut off. That's fine. Just keep joining it up. And just add the little corners in. And you just get a slightly different effect there.
let's just finish this one off. And then what you can do, if you've got felt tips or sharpies, you can actually the, do the exact same thing but with coloured pens. So I'm going to just show you how I did something like this. Um, so obviously this was using the slightly thinner biros as well. So for this one, it was really just start in the middle, draw a random circle, doesn't have to be an exact circle. And again, just start filling it in. And try it with different colors. Doesn't have to be the same colour. You could do rainbow doodles, which is very appropriate at the minute. Our craft session next week um, that Bev is doing is actually going to be how to do to make cardboard rainbows which is a kid friendly activity if you need something to keep the little ones busy I'm sure a lot of you have already been doing some rainbow crafts I've seen some great pictures of rainbows in windows Something quite nice about the mono, monochrome effect, just using black and white. But this is definitely something you can experiment with. You want something a little bit more colourful in your life at the minute. Once you've done one, you can draw a couple more. I'm going to start in the middle in this one.
So this one in particular is one that kids can get really creative with. Don't really need a huge amount of art materials. Pack of crayons, felt tips. And a few sheets of paper. So there's so many different kinds of effects that you can create. I'm going to show you some of the ones I've done with the fine liner as well. So for these sorts of mountains, you just sort of make three triangles. Try and do them different shapes, different sizes. Maybe another one in front there as well. And then you can just finish it off with a line at the bottom there just to cut them off. So you want to start from the top of the mountain, just kind of work down, cut it in half, just make a sort of jagged line from the top of the mountain. And this is kind of acting as a bit of a 3D line. You can add a few kind of cracks in there as well. And then take your fine liner. And diagonally, you just want to start adding in those straight lines. And you can keep these on straight. It looks quite effective when these are just straight lines rather than curved. And if you're using a particularly fine pen, you just keep the lines nice and close together gives you that sort of shadow effect. And then just continue it down the left sides. For anyone who's just joining, let us know if you're drawing along with us today. And if you want to send any pictures in of anything that you've done, please do share them on our Facebook page in the comments below.
And then you can just continue. Do a sort of landscape at the bottom here. Whatever you want it to be. Continue up here if you like. And just use that fine liner. You can start doing sort of waves, different effects here. Don't have to keep it as straight lines, you can do whatever you like, experiment with it. You can just keep filling that in and then you get something that sort of looks a bit like this. I've done the mountain slightly differently in this one. The other thing I did with this particular piece was just to experiment with different ways of doing the sky. Um, which I slightly regretted starting because it takes quite a long time. But that's essentially just to use little circles. So instead of using lines, I'm just drawing lots of little circles. And you just start building those up on top of each other. It can be different sizes. And it does take quite a long time, but you do get quite a nice effect. You'd be a bit more patient than I was, a little bit neater than I did. I think the thing that I struggle with slightly with these types of things, which is it's one of the reasons why I've started to do them more, is when I start a piece of work, I like it to be ideally finished that same day. I'm not very good at starting something and then coming back to it. So doing things like this, it's quite nice to actually be able to sit down and do an hour or so on it and then come back the next day and do another hour or two on it. 15 minutes. If you feel like you need to just kind of take your mind off stuff for a little while, you can just sit down, add a bit more to it. Um, and it kind of just becomes your sort of mindful, almost meditation time, really. And at the end, you've got this really great piece of work that you've put all this time and effort into. think every circle that you draw, every line that you draw, it's effort that you've put in. It's a little piece of you, every one of these. The beauty of it is that everyone that you do looks totally different. And I can guarantee that everyone 
who's joined in today, all of theirs will look really different as well. You don't have to follow exact sort of instructions for each one, you know, you can really sort of start to be as creative as possible. Just do it your own way. And once you start to build that up, you're getting quite a nice effect. It just sits quite nicely next to the lines of the hills and the mountains. And just continue and keep filling it in. So just to recap for today, been looking at different ways of using the mark making on paint. In different colours. Been trying different pens, so thick and thin pens, you can get some really nice effects. And then also just using the thick pens for these sort of tree stump effects that give you that kind of optical illusion. And then the triangles that we began with. So I hope you enjoyed today's session, um, like I say if you have done anything today um, or you do anything in the next few days that you want to send in to us please do, um, you can just comment on this link, send you pictures in below. Um, next week if you want to join us we are doing a abstract watercolour session, um, so we're going to be looking again at um, creating different mark making techniques over the top of watercolour patterns. Um, so a lot of that's just going to be kind of experimenting with colours, with mark making, um, with the, some of these kind of geometric patterns on top of that. So similar to how we've been doing this today over the acrylic paint, uh, we're going to be doing that with um, the watercolour and also looking at how you can use watercolour to use create different effects, different colour combinations um, and that's quite a mindful activity as well so you don't need a huge amount of artistic ability if you're totally new to it please do join us next week same time one o'clock and thanks for joining us